Yeah, for square footage, this is the largest. I've done taller pieces, but this is definitely, hands down, the biggest piece. We've sewn the most fabric um, more than any other town that I've worked with, which is amazing. Um, people from Buffalo really came out. Between just donations and volunteers, um, it w you felt like it was a community. Like, they just couldn't stop coming. It was great. I mean, even today, we're installing the um, Albright Knox at the Clifton Hall, and um, people like who have been volunteering since April are showing up going, oh, that's what we did. <laughs> and that's just so satisfying because then you know that their work is up on the wall and they're the ones you're doing this for, which is so great. I think that, you know, the, the first building, 950, was pretty unbelievable just because it was the first one. Like we were trying really hard to get it done. It was 100 degrees outside. <laughs> You know, when we finished it, it was just like this awesome moment. Like everybody on the street lit up. Um, the whole corner was bright. It was just like this handshaking moment. And that was amazing. These buildings were chosen as active sites for this project because they were important in the sort of grand scheme of the architectural legacy of this city. but. There are also spaces that have been empty for a very long time and only now are sort of being um, activated again. You know, 950 was recently purchased and it's going to become a mixed-use building and the church is, is slated to become a, a performance art center, a performance and cultural arts center next year. And uh, this work sort of announced this new cultural commitment to these spaces and when you have as many people who volunteered their time uh, and the big, the literal bigness of the work and the way that the work, how cohesive it was. There was a lot of people that touched each and every piece of that fabric. And you also get like the stories of people donating the fabric and where it came from. We had a, you know, a very large donation at the very beginning, um, individual just suffering from dementia and her daughter just didn't have anywhere to store the fabric so the fact that a lot of her work is highlighted on a church and, and I have a, a running mental tally of where pieces of fabric come came from. I had a story about this woman who showed up and she was at the church and I was by there by myself right in the morning and she came up she's like oh my gosh I was looking for my mom's fabric she just passed away and we gave all the fabric to you guys and I got married in this church, and my mom was married in this church, all my kids were christened here, and it was just this amazing trifecta of awesome. Like, it was an homage to her, and her location, and being there. And, you know, it not just being a moment in time that you put in a book and you kind of move forward, but it's, it's really kind of re-engaging those nostalgic moments that, oh my gosh, can be so powerful. So I find that very empowering and exciting, and especially that contemporary art can do that in some way is just thrilling, as an artist at least, yeah. I feel very, like it's a successful moment. <laughs> I think we're still trying to understand uh, what it means to have touched so many people with a project. I mean, for me, it's the biggest project that I've ever done. So, it's kind of awesome. I think that the reaction, again, kind of surprised us. I mean, we have seen so much activity on social media um, you know, many factors above our normal audience levels, um, the way that people are sharing this work, um, the way in which I think people have recognized that this is work that the Albright helped produce, and I think the way in which so many people committed themselves to a project that was associated with the Albright is a really meaningful step for the Public Art Initiative. And so people are gonna come to the museum now, or they're gonna see those buildings and then come to the museum and understand it's connected to the museum here. Every time I took a cab and I told them about the project after we had put it up, they were like, oh my gosh, yes! And I was like, are you going to the Albright? They're like, yeah, of course. Like, that's what it's connected to. So of course I'm going. Like, oh yes, I've been to the Albright. It was just all of a sudden the museum was intertwined with it, which I thought was, that's part of my practice, is to try to get people to kind of come to the museums or come to the galleries as a way of comfort and knowing they're just as accepted as everybody else. There was a lot, like a lot kind of buried in there, or woven in there, if you will. So, um, I don't know, it was a lot of moments just like kind of step back and reflect as to what was really going on. It was definitely a challenge. 
for sure. But um, you know, I would have wouldn't have wanted to be anywhere else. <laughs>